This is one of the funnest things you can do as a photographer. So what is it, what do you need, and how do you do it? It's called steel wall photography. You basically put steel in something, swing it round, it sparks up, you do a long exposure, and you get effects like this and this with the light trails from the sparks. What do you need? You need steel wool, and you need the finest steel wool. So this is triple zero on Amazon, and it, you see this? It pulls apart like candy floss, but it's still steel. And when you burn it, because it's so delicate, it burns really quickly and it will just start sparking up straight away. Whereas if you get the, like, the stronger stuff, you'll have a hard time lighting it with a lighter. So make sure you get triple zero steel wool. Then you need a whisk. Don't get a big whisk because you see these gaps here. You see how small they are. When this starts burning inside, if it's a big whisk, the gaps are bigger on the bigger ones and it's going to fly out once it goes a little smaller. So you want the small whisk. So then when the steel wool starts burning inside and gets smaller, it doesn't creep out and you can swing it around for longer. So you've got that and then you need, well, it's already hanging off it, string. So you need a ball of string. The shorter the string off the actual whisk, the smaller the circles are going to be. Whereas the longer the string, you can do bigger circles. It will just take a little bit longer. So that is what you need. So now let's head back to the video and I'll show you how to do it. Make sure you stick around to the end to see the results. Let's go. So to set this up, you obviously need to get your tripod and then we're going to go over to the location. I like to use things that have got stuff to bounce off of. So this tunnel, the, the sparks are going to bounce off this tunnel. It's going to make it look a lot cooler. But obviously you're going to get your tripod. You're going to set it up obviously in the middle and then you're going to get someone, if you've hopefully got a friend, <laughs> to stand in the middle and you need to catch focus on them. Because if you leave autofocus on, it's not going to know what to focus on because there's that much going on. So you need to set a centre point, whether that be the floor where you're going to stand or your actual friend who's going to stand in the middle, catch focus on their face and then you know where to stand then and you can get that photo crisp in sharp. So settings, I'm going to go F5 for mine. No, not F5, F10 is what I'm going to go for because the smaller the number, the less is going to be in focus. So obviously we've got these big light trails. You don't just want those middles to be in focus, you want all of them to be in focus. So I'm going to go F10, maybe even F15 and then I'm going to go like a 15 to 30 second shutter so then I can get loads of light trails in the whole time and it's just going to make a lot basically the longer you do it the more trails you're going to have basically so I'm going to go 15 seconds ISO 100 you don't need any noise because it's a long exposure you don't need ISO so get that all the way down to 100 and that's it we're just waiting for it to be darker really now because if you come here well actually if you look at this intro that we recorded earlier look behind me you see all the trails are getting blown out by the light it's because it's still light here so that's actually affecting this right now we kind of need to wait for it to be darker Finger. Right, we've got the water shots done. Now we're gonna go to the center shots. We're gonna get a flat one, and then you see here, we're gonna get a wide one of the tunnel as well from far away, and that'll be that. But these iPhone, I'm so impressed with this iPhone 14 Pro Max, and obviously Charlie's angles that he's getting for the behind the scenes. But the quality is ridiculous. Like those shots just there, yeah, it's sick. You can use an iPhone, people, to make videos. There's no excuse. <laughs> obviously, you have to buy the newest one though, but still. <laughs> <laughs> It's gone heavy now, the metal's gone solid. That's so weird, it's gone like metal. Science, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> right, we are done. We're kind of running out of steel wool. My hands hurt because of rope burn. It like burns your hands doing this too many times. But we should hopefully got the shots. We've got one by the water, a wide shot, and then a closer shot, and that should be it. So let's head back to Lightroom and see if this was worth it, and then you can go out and do it yourself. Right, let's have a look at what we got and see if getting burnt about five, six times was actually worth it. And if you've noticed, I'm in my new setup because I've changed it around. The last desk was too small. Now I've got this massive oak electric desk because why not? That just looks so much better. So videos are gonna look like this from now on. But the photos. So we started off with this one. I tried to run backwards under the tunnel and then run forwards. 
it wasn't really working the lines are a bit too harsh like you see that it just looks like i've drawn onto the photo so that's kind of what you want to avoid with long exposures with this steel wool stuff so i don't really like this one i merged them together and then put a castle in it because i don't know why i just did <laughs> So yeah, that photo is what it is. I'm just gonna leave that one there. Then we moved on to the center shot inside the tunnel, like a nice flat one. And normally I would remove myself from the middle of the circle because it actually doesn't look that impressive when you can see the person doing the effect. But because I look like a little burning figure, it looked quite creepy. I thought it looked cool, so I kept it in there. Then we moved on to the puddle shot, which you probably saw from the B-roll. I didn't explain too much on the shoot. I just wanted to sort of make it quick and snappy and then just get to the photos. Um, but we found the puddle basically, and it actually works really well naturally. So this is the photo before, which looks literally perfect. But I went ahead in Photoshop and got the original image, like from the top, that's actually the sharp part, and flipped that into the puddle and then merged it in. So then it's just a tad bit sharper and clearer, but just looks a little bit more impressive but without making it look unrealistic so yeah definitely recommend doing that to any reflections if you can and then we tried to do a another one from the right hand side of it but again it just it's not as good because it's not it's not as wide I'm, I'm i'm cutting off the top of the ref, the actual streaks of like steel wall coming towards the camera i'm cutting them off so it just doesn't look as impressive but Again, it is what it is. I flipped this one as well, tried to make it look a bit sharper in Photoshop, but overall the one inside the tunnel from the first angle of the puddle, that's the best one. That's kind of what you want to aim for. You want to be nice and far, because the closer you are, you kind of don't see the perspective of the effect. So make sure you back up and go wide. But other than that, that's all the photos. Short, snappy video, hopefully you enjoyed. It's cheap, it's easy, it's fun. Go do some steel wool, and uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe because I've got another banging video coming up very soon. <laughs> I feel like a fucking, I don't know, like I'm some sort of ninja, I'm just gonna fucking... <laughs>